Hi there. I want to show you about some of the options that you have within Connect Visualization Services for visualizing and presenting data. We'll get started today with a line chart, uh, but we want to switch that data to show how it's displayed differently amongst all of these. And you can see I'm um, presented with the standard configuration page. Let's add some data to this in the top right. Hit add data. Uh, and today I want to add some temperature data. So let me type in temperature, temperature. And now let me add some specific ones. I want to get in my module temperature. Let me grab my temperature from this source, uh, from my 1550 station, perfect. And okay, from Noah, let's add these four. Now, perfect. I've got all four of these plotted. You see they're all plotted here on a single axis. You can see the module temperature is much higher because you know it's actually generating heat. These are more of my ambient environmental data. I can change my time range here on the bottom left under visual settings. I can change my y-axis mode, got single, multiple axes, or I even have a stacked plot, which is really, really handy for giving each their own independent y-axis. I'm gonna go back to single. There we go, perfect. Back to single axis. You can also um, explore adding cursors too. So let me add some cursors. You can see I've got my add cursor button here. You drop a cursor here, you drop a cursor here. And you can see now that I've got these cursors, I can also see different summary statistics computed for this line chart. Um, so this might be familiar to folks who've used Connect Data Services. I can get a similar behavior here where I'm pulling up my different summaries when I drop cursors onto this. But again, one of the goals today is to show the different varieties that folks have of how to present data. So we have the line chart, but what does this data look like if I change the symbol type? I'm in visualization settings. Let me hit change. Let me show you what happens when I do column chart. Now, column chart lets me take this data and present it as columns. I can pick my statistic, my average, minimum, maximum, last. I can change my column type. Do I want it to be hourly, daily, or custom duration? And I can even stack these. I can do none, I can do raw percent. So if I wanna say, okay, maybe I don't necessarily care about the individual values, but I wanna see summary calculations over time. Now I can pick my average, my statistic type, and see those plotted over different time ranges, whether it's today, yesterday, three days, or a custom duration. So column charts present a, a very interesting way of not just visualizing the raw data, but visualizing summary statistics of that data. Great, helpful way of also presenting the same data points. Let's go ahead and change this again. Let me look at data grid. Now there's gonna be some folks who say, well, I like to see summary statistics, but I, I don't necessarily care about visualizing these. I wanna present a table of data. And that's exactly what the data grid can give you. You can either show all the statistics or you can pick which statistics you want to show. Um, and this will, again, take each of those different temperature streams, my module temperature, my different weather ones, my 1550, and present these as a table. And so now if there's anyone in my organization who wants to see a display, but with raw values on it, like what's actually, you know, in the, uh, in the archive, or uh, I want to see these summaries, but wants to see the specific data values and not necessarily see them trended, the data grid is the visualization for you. So column chart and data grid, uh, slightly similar, but data grid is, is less of a visual format and more just gives you a, a set of raw numbers. Let's go to pie chart. Again, if you're trying to look at the distribution of these and figure out, hey, which is higher, which is lower, trying to manage uh, you know, that, that different ratio distribution, here's another way of doing this. Now, I also have different ways of presenting this pie chart. Here I'm looking at my average, but I also look at my last value, the maximum, the minimum. If I wanted to say, okay, uh, you know, within this time range today, I want to see a pie chart that shows me which has the largest minimum or the smallest minimum or the biggest maximum, or let me just look at the last value for all these. So again, pie chart, great way of visualizing the distribution of multiple different streams. Let's change one more time. Let's go to status board. And this is a really helpful one here, status board. This is the default. Whenever you open up a new asset or open up a new uh, stream, this is the default one. This one's gonna provide several helpful pieces of information. In addition to the label, of course, it'll give you the current value and any units that are mapped to it. It'll give you a spark line on the right and a trend that'll show you over this time range that we've got selected on our time selector, what's been the trend of this? Is it going up, is it going down? Um, and it'll color highlight these for me. And you know, if you 
don't want to show any of these particular elements, the value, the trend, or the spark line, you can turn these off here. So a great way if you have a long list of data items that you want to present, um, but you only want to show you know a quick spark line and maybe don't have a room for a full trend, the status board is a great way of presenting a huge list of values to your users. Now let's keep on going. Let me hit change. Got two more, summary chart and XY plot. What is summary chart? Again, we've we've done column chart, we've done line. Let's see what summary does. So here's a different way of looking at that data. In column or, or bar chart, where I'm actually looking at values and I'm saying, you know what? I don't necessarily want to see these plotted over time like I did in the column chart. What if I am very specifically interested in just one value, just one, over this time range today? I want to see the average, or I want to see the minimum, or the maximum, or the last, or the sum, the total. Here we can say, okay, what if someone said, oh, you know, I'm uh, looking at power consumption, sum up all these different devices, or if I have multiple different flow readings, I want to see which one is my largest or lowest flow, or the, uh, you know, the largest average flow. This is exactly what the summary chart is for. So a great complement to the line chart and the bar chart. You pick your summary, your statistic, whether it's minimum, maximum, last, or total here, you can choose your sort order, and it'll give you this nice clean visual of just a single value for each of the streams that you have over that time range. So again, great complement to the column chart and the line chart. Let's you pick an average, gives you a single value, you can sort it in the order that you want. And we've got just one more. Let's change one last time. Go to XY plot. And this is the one that's pretty familiar for folks. We go to XY, I hit select. And now we've got our X axis. Again, we've got multiple different streams here. Remember we had four of them. So I have my NOAA feed here at the bottom. And now it's plotting all of the others as XY plots. And you can see again, since these are all hopefully related temperature streams, we can see we've got a roughly, you know, some, some rough lines here. Um, we'd probably see a greater trend if I removed some of these streams. If I go to source, of course, I could hit edit and start trimming some of these out. But again, XY plot, pretty straightforward. You pick one axis and it plots the other with XY pairings so you can visualize relationships. So goal today was just to show you a quick run through of some of the different visualization options here, what the column chart looks like, the data grid, the line chart, the XY plot. And if looking at some of these piques your interest within the documentation section, there's a great additional background on how you can use these specifically and what all the configuration options are. Again, the end goal is that you can use these in your dashboards to create rich visualizations that present all this data in exactly the right format that your users need to make data-driven decisions. And hopefully this helps you get started making your own visualizations within Connect Visualization Services. Thank you.